All right, day two of uh, trying to get this transmission pan off. We got a fresh cut and uh, we're ready to roll. So let's go. My auto transmission fluid also arrived today, so that's good. Got some nice OEM Toyota T4, which is apparently pretty much the only thing you should run in these transmissions if you're gonna flush it out. Nothing but the best for our big stupid slut over here. Ooh. My heat gun battery should be charged now, so I'm gonna get under the car and I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun. <clears throat> just try and warm up that seal a little bit and hopefully that gets it to unstick. And then, yeah, we're just gonna try and pry it off from there, so. Here's hoping it goes well. Took a lot of convincing, but I finally freed it enough where I can actually pull the thing out. I literally had to use a crowbar and a screwdriver because all that old silicon was basically just gluing it on. <laughs> I might have bent it a little bit, so I'll have to try and sort of bend the uh, lip back out so it doesn't have any leaks, but I can take it off now. Thank fuck. All right, so I got the pan out here and there's no like metal shards or anything in it. Um, so that's a good sign because I thought I could hear like grinding or something when I was driving and um, would put it under load, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the fluid I've got in there because at the moment this is what I had in there, um, which says it's recommended for Toyota T2 um, to four, but apparently you're supposed to just run T4, not this shit. So. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give this a clean out with some brake cleaner and clean all this silicon shit off and then uh, replace the filter and stuff in the um, bottom of the trans and change the solenoid. All right, I'm back. I just went for a little lunch break. I had uh, some nice Hungry Jacks or Burger King for you Americans. Um, all right, I'm gonna get under the car now and I'm gonna replace the uh, solenoid and I'm gonna put the new uh, transmission filter in. So let's get to it. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so under here we've got the filter right here. So this is what I'm gonna be replacing, um, which you saw in the previous video, I unboxed it. Um, so that's getting replaced. And these are the little solenoid boys that I will be replacing one of today. Okay, so I fucked up. <laughs> the solenoid that I bought is actually a lockup solenoid and it wasn't a shift solenoid. Apparently, the shift solenoids have orange wires and the lockup solenoid has blue wires. The thing is, they look identical. So I pretty much just took this solenoid out, the original one that's in the car, gave it a really good clean, and then once I put everything back together a second time, because I did complete the job with the lockup solenoid in there, so yeah, I had to do it again, uh, it, everything worked. So just a heads up. Uh, I'm pretty sure the one I need to replace is this one here. I think that's solenoid two. I'm gonna quickly look up a diagram and just confirm that it is. Um, but yeah, that is what's gonna make my car actually shift. And then I've got to clean off all this silicon and shit. And that way I can use that new gasket that I got uh, in the filter kit to reseal it. So that's what we're working with. This is what it looks like with the pan off. <laughs> Here's a uh, quick little comparison of the uh, old trans filter versus the new one. Yeah, I think uh, it's definitely time for a new one. That one's looking a bit... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got the new solenoid in, which is here. Um, it comes with a ground wire um, as well as like the plug. I'm assuming the other ones are like internally grounded then or something, seeing as they don't have this wire. But um, all I've done is I've had to use uh, not the original mounting bolt. I've used that for the one that was already in there because uh, they were both connected by this one. But what you've got to do for this solenoid here in the rostra kit is actually use the bolt next to it on this side. Um, so that's where it goes in. And then I've just put the ground wire uh, up in there as well. So it's um, through that bolt there, which is holding it on. Doesn't wiggle at all. Nope, they're all good. And I've just zip tied um, the cable here just up out of the way because I can't get it back in this guide here. Um, so yeah, just make sure that's out of the way and isn't gonna get hit by anything in here or jammed up in um, the pan when you put it back on. But there's a new solenoid in and there's a new filter in as well. So yeah, now I can uh, get back to cleaning all this shit off and then putting it back together and filling it up. Sweet. I'm just gonna celebrate a small victory here. I have the uh, the pan back on the car. Man, 
So what I skipped over was just me um, cutting off the silicon off the uh, pan and then getting under the car and then just um, getting a razor and cutting off all the silicon that was on the um, actual transmission um, on the bottom itself and just cleaning all that off. Um, that gasket um, that goes on the pan, all I did um, to help me get it on the car was I just got um, a little bit of a black uh, silicon that I've got and I put it on the um, outside of the pan, like the tiniest amount, the smallest little itty bit for it to stick to the, um, the pan uh, and that way when I put it up against the car it's not going to like jiggle around or fall off or anything. It still did move a little bit just because I only put the smallest amount on uh, and what I did then was um, just hold it up against the car and get a little screwdriver of mine and stick it up into the bolt holes um, and then I would push the pan up flat so that the gasket would squish up against it and then remove the screwdriver and put a bolt in and I just did that the whole way around um, to make sure that they all went in and they all went through the gasket and up into the transmission. It does take a while and it is tedious as shit but that is probably the best and easiest way to do it. So. Yeah, now all I gotta do is I gotta tighten them all up, put the sump um, plug back in uh, for that, uh, and then reconnect the um, dipstick, and then I should be right to fill it up, and we're pretty much done. So yeah, I'll update you guys um, once I've tightened them all up and I've reconnected the uh, dipstick valve. All right, <laughs> just so you can see, there it is on the car. She's back up. God damn, I still gotta tighten everything up. All right. <laughs> All right, it's all back together now. God damn. There's the pan back on. The dipstick's been reconnected. It was kind of a bitch to reconnect the middle of it, but uh, where is it? There he is down there, just hanging out. Uh, it does bolt to something, but mine's been unbolted. I don't know what the fuck the previous owner was doing, but they, uh, they left it unbolted. But it's all back together. I can fill up the transmission now with fluid. And then it's pretty much a done job. Thank God. It's still a mess of tools and shit under there. And I'm very dizzy, again, from laying on my back, just staring up for ages, and my arms are sore as shit. This job was not fun. All right, so I just got my partner to help me fill it up with transmission fluid, and I fired it up, and I uh, just made sure that I um, ran it for a little bit and then added a bit more fluid, just so it pumps through the new filter and um, everything like that, and there wasn't like a low level after um, I had run it the first time or anything like that. So, yeah, um, I'm gonna stick the wheels back on it now and then I'll probably take it for a little spin and um, check the fluid level again to see if I have to top it up a bit more because quite a bit did come out. I ran about a bit over three liters of um, stuff came out of it. So um, how much have I used of this? I have added about three liters it seems. Um, maybe a little bit, just a tiny bit less than three liters. Uh, yeah, like 2.7 or something like that. So, I'm gonna clean all this up, get the car on the ground, and then uh, take it for a little drive. And we'll see how it goes. All right, so it's been two days since um, these video clips that you've just seen. Um, I had to redo it all again like I put in there and put the original solenoid back in after I'd cleaned it up and everything. Um, but it does work and it does shift through all the gears now properly. Um, doesn't have an issue shifting at all, but I do feel like the gearbox has probably suffered a little bit of damage, um, more than likely due to running with low fluid the last time I changed it um, with that Penrite fluid. Um, because on the dipstick it's very vague, it's got a, a level that says cold, so I filled it and I filled it just past the cold fill line and then I took it for a drive and obviously I hadn't run it yet and then added more fluid so it would have been low and then I feel like driving it around town that day, uh, probably about a month ago when I did that, um, must have damaged it a little bit because it is quite scratchy um, like it just sounds like thing like metallic grinding basically under load anyway but um, when you get to highway speeds and cruising speeds it goes away and yeah it's just gonna have to be something I uh, live with until I can eventually have the money for the rest of the shit to get the R150 in the car, but it is what it is. Anyway, if you want to <laughs> know how to change solenoids or anything like that on a A341E gearbox, there you go. I hope this helps. And uh, yeah, I'll um, throw up a driving bid soon. Um, it's probably going to be annoying because you'll be able to hear that scratchy shit, but yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Peace.